All right, we have our our continuation of our series, you know, build, build, build. And this this portion, of course, is build his house. And we have an interesting group of people here. I will give you an opportunity to introduce yourselves. Pero bigyan yun rin kung ano yung background niyo, meaning yung what sort of training did you have and kung ano yung role ninyo ngayon sa church. Okay ba yun? Well, let's start with this uh, this side. Nisi pa ni Pastor Ibo. Hi, everybody. Saan ka ba nang galing? <laughs> uh, I grew up in church. You know, I've been here since I was a youth. So, uh, with regards to my background, you know, I learned everything here. Even the mm. music, how, how to play music and everything. So, I was able to use what I learned here and use it outside. I yeah. teach uh, music before. Wow. And right now, I am the minister head of the worship team here in the fort. So, All right. Okay. Well, I'm the Jess. only princess in the <laughs> They're group. princess. <laughs> um, I handle the internal and external communications of New Life, the fort. Um, I started serving in media around 2016 mm -hmm. because I was attracted by people handling the cameras. That's attracted? Attracted. Oh, okay. Attracted. Okay. The people handling, Hand, handling the, the media. Okay. But previously, ano yung background mo? Education, training, whatever. Ano ba? Education. Uh, uh, a little story na lang. Uh, I started college. Parang third year high school ako. Alam ko na na gusto kong mag medtech. As in, sure ako na medtech yung gusto kong course. Pagdating ko ng college, syempre, fourth year, you will do entrance exams, ganyan. Lahat sila, waitlisted ako. Parang it was such a struggle to step in dun sa gusto ko. Tapos parang sabi ni mama, mag multimedia ka na lang. Eh ako po, I, I don't have any arts na background. Mm -hmm. Ayoko ng arts, hindi po ako marunong mag-draw yan. Since tick lang yung kaya ko nung time na yun. Tapos, andun ako, I, I, I followed what my mom said. Kasi, Ang weird na pumasa ako sa multimedia na stick yung drawing ko sa entrance exam. Oh, wow. It's just weird na parang ha, pumasa ako sa arts. Alam mo, grace ni God yan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tapos, ano lang po, bigla na lang um, nagulat ako kasi duma dumating pa ako sa point na kinausap ako ng prof ko na hindi ata talaga to para sa sa'yo. <laughs> Gusto mo ako na kumausap sa magulang mo na hindi to para sa sa'yo. Yeah. Not knowing na 2016, nung nakikita ko po yung media team ng New Life The Fort, there was a passion for me na parang, I want to be a part of that. Wow. I didn't know that my yes will take me to help in the church, to serve in the church. So, grabe po yung alignment ni Lord wow. pagdating sa yeah. mga bagay-bagay. Kasi you never know where your, take, your yes will take you. There you go. Sabi ni Ses, wala daw siyang masasabi. Oh, May advanced questions good, good. ba siya, Pastor? Huh? May advanced questions ba siya? Pa. Oh, oh. Okay. Follow up question. Well, go ahead, um, Sandy. Uh, with the background first and then what I do pastor. Yes. Uh, with... Bahala ka, nasa iyo. <laughs> nasa iyo, Mike eh. <laughs> well, my educational background really has nothing to do with what I do right now in church. Um, um, with I, Previously, I was in aviation, but... Uh, what I do right now is I serve with the creatives, with these people, and I get to lead the, these amazing people doing the media. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, Pastor, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Pero matagal ka na rin sa simbahan, di ba? Sa oh, church. Yes, Pastor. Um, I think I'm the living, breathing testimony of, of uh, uh, ability comes with availability. Yep. Yeah. So, I pretty much with Pastor Ibo, I knew everything that I'm doing right now here in church. Wow. And the church has equipped us, made things available for us to, for, yeah, for me to do Mamaya what I'm able to do. Mamaya siguro mauungkat dyan, ano, as we, <laughs> as we, as we, as we, dito naman tayo sa medyo more experienced side. <laughs> dito kami sa bandang youth kasi. Sige, let's start with uh, Joey. Well, I'm, professionally, I'm a licensed civil engineer, been in the construction industry for quite some time. Uh, in my previous career, actually. But uh, in, in the church, I'm uh, one of the ministry heads of Lifeline Outreach and also Prime Jam. Wow, okay. Pero marami din tong pinanggalingan. Actually, uh, since engineer, engineer yung background mo, di ba? You were also part of the group where um, 
kasi marami na tayong building projects na pinagdaanan no, in the short time that we were leading and uh, you were also part of that group. I think we'll we'll get to your story in a bit more. But uh, David? Hi guys. Uh, so I... <laughs> Hi. Well, well, I basically started off in uh, theater with Joe, sort of. Um, in fact, my first... One of my first... Um, what do you call it? Interactions uh, or experiences with what I'm doing now is actually because of Joe. Uh, he was helping me set up a computer at home and it fell on my head. The whole table, <laughs> the whole table fell on my head. So, so that was an unforgettable experience. But um, So in 2000, I started with trumpets, um, doing theater. I did, that, I did that for about four years. At the same time, I was doing, uh, I was studying computer uh, applications. So tech stuff and then after four years I decided I didn't want to do it anymore <laughs> so I um, I changed I switched courses I went into multimedia arts um, uh, and at around that time uh, I had begun s uh, switching over to uh, the back end of things in the church so I first started off here as praise and worship I was doing midweek service <laughs> with uh, Pastor Mitch and Pat, right? So we were right. leading worship. And then after that, uh, I saw a need in media because that was my need also. Eh? I, I, needed, I needed points, uh, OJT points oh, for college. Right. <laughs> so perfect place to do it was here, right? Um, and then my predecessor, she was uh, about to migrate to, uh, to Australia. I decided, okay, I'll just, I'll help out here first. So eventually, uh, I moved over completely to media. And I was doing that for about seven years. And then God called me to do something else, which is uh, IT. So that's what I'm doing now. And uh, speaking of IT, yes, Joe? Yes. And uh, I've, yeah, I've been a lot of places. Like, actually, like Pastor Ibo, uh, I grew, pretty much grew up in the church. Believe it or not, my first ministry was children's choir. Wow! It did not really? last. It did not last long. <laughs> you also dabbled in dance. <laughs> I actually took a hip hop dance class yes. once. Yes, magka classic kami. Yeah, uh, one yeah. time lang yun. <laughs> <laughs> the teacher was very frustrated. Yes, but it was fun. Yeah. So I've I've been. Ever since um, I was small, I've been um, in the arts. Uh, I've been doing a lot of like different things: graphic design, uh, model building. Um, so when I went into college, uh, I took up a little bit of civil engineering, like Joey, and uh, a little bit of architecture also. Um, but career-wise, uh, I've been working in a lot of uh, related fields. So I've been doing advertising. Um, printing, even, yeah. uh, and also theater. That's actually what, where we met, we Pastor, met, yeah. in, in theater, uh, events, yeah. uh, until now. And today, uh, I work as the technical director for the church. There you go. Very interesting, I don't know, yung, yung journeys natin. Because we have, we have people here who learned everything in the church. And then we have a group of people, uh, all the stuff, their background, their training, and all of that, they bring into the church, diba? I think that's a great mix, you know. And I'm a, ako naman yung my background, of course, since after high school. Actually, during high school, very involved in in the arts, you know, uh, being part of a like a not a choir, but uh, like kundirana is like a band, you know, and uh, boy band that traveled and all of these things and. Uh, all, all, all my life, parang you know, after right after high school, already joined professional theater. In fact, I was doing professional theater at age 12, and so since that, uh, and and the people I was with are actually the ones who went to West End, and and I was like, wow, these are the the people that did Miss Saigon and all these things. I go, wow, it's amazing to to see these people. And I was still a, a little young at that time, but um, so. Yung background ko had no church because a lot of people, you guys, grew up in church. I had no church was not in the picture because uh, Jesus was not in the picture, you know. And uh, it's just interesting how 
you know, God takes you through a journey and now I'm a pastor and parang you're wondering, ah, ano nangyari dun sa background mo? Is it still helping you? I believe uh, to a certain degree, it's still, you know, this is still a stage and you're still communicating. It may be a different a different way. And, and, and it's just interesting how God uses the things that you've learned in the past or, or like you said, Pastor Ibo, the things that you're, you learned here, now you're using it outside. You know, you're, you're reaching people outside. Um, um, I'll, I'm going to read a scripture, okay? Because we're talking about uh, building a house. Iba iba yung, yung focus natin, iba. When you say building, building his home is setting an atmosphere for people to feel like they're welcome and they feel like they're connected. And same with building his people. But yung focal, yung focal point natin yun is building uh, the house, which is more of the, uh, the physical place. Diba? How do we prepare this physical place to become a space for people to have an encounter with God? Because iba yung hindi lang siya, it's not just a performance, it's not just having all these uh, wonderful things. Diba? So that's what we're talking about here. And, and I think. You guys can relate with, with this particular scripture here. Because God was specific. When He was building, uh, when He was instructing Moses to build the tabernacle, okay? He actually was the one who appointed the artists and the craftsmen that will build the home, uh, the, the tabernacle. And, and I just want to see your, I guess, what's your reaction to this scripture? How do you, how do you relate? Do you get do you relate? You know, how, how does it make you feel? Exodus chapter 31, verse 1 to 6. I'm reading in the New Living Translation. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I have specifically, right, chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, grandson of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the Spirit of God. Because when we think, you know, uh, the people that are filled with the Spirit of God, those are the ministers, those are the people that will lay hands and preach and all of these things. But this guy has a different assignment, but still, I have filled him with the Spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of crafts. He is a master craftsman, expert in working with gold and silver and bronze. He is skilled in engraving and mounting gemstones and in carving wood. He's a master of ev at every craft. And then it says, And I have personally appointed Oho Oholiab, son of Ahishamak, of the tribe of Dan, to be his assistant. So, hindi lang yung head, but the people that will work with this person. Moreover, I have given special skill to all the gifted craftsmen so that they can make all the things I have commanded you to make. So, with that in mind, just your your initial reaction, or I'm sure this is not the first time you're hearing this, but God actually appoints, anoints, and gives wisdom and skill to people He chose to build the physical uh, house, the physical tabernacle. Ano naman yung yung sa tingin nyo, is that imp is that just in the Old Testament, or you think it's still? Uh, it's still uh, relevant to all of us today, right? So let's start with uh, this group of people here. Kaya uh, With that, Pastor, while reading that, imagine God choosing you for a particular purpose. Wow. And uh, I heard, we all know this phrase, you know, God will, God does not uh, call the qualified. Mm. He qualified. He qualifies the called. So, uh, I, I think we, with that, maybe some of us here can relate the I'm not qualified yep. to do that. <laughs> but with that, I, I believe God put that desire in us to serve in the house. And when you start developing yung, uh, what God has given you, you started uh, you're owning the house, and uh, I believe it will all be revealed. Uh, sabi sa Joel chapter, Joel Reyes chapter one <laughs> verse two. <laughs> uh, this way, uh, your avail your availability is your greatest ability. 
and uh, some of us here, you just made yourself available. That's true. You, f- uh, you found out that you have a gift in this area. Then you begin to say, God, use this, uh, what I learned, this, what you've given me. And I think uh, it will give us a different perspective when it comes to yeah, serving in the house and the um, calling of God. I- I'll ask uh, Joey this, because Pastor Ibu mentioned the, that line, yung parang God doesn't called out. Ano sabi mo? He qualifies the called. What do you think about that that phrase? I think that's a comforting phrase for me because, <laughs> you know, when I was hearing uh, the scripture that you mentioned a while ago about um, I forgot the name but I did remember the description that the Bible states that he is a master of all, of, yeah. of all crafts. And Wow, that's something. Because uh, coming from a practitioner, uh, I've been in the industry for many years already. There's just no way that you can be a master of every single craft. Wow, there's yeah, a lot of true. trades out there. And it would be a trap for you to try to achieve that out of your own strength. So uh, hearing that actually blesses me. <laughs> because, you know, I'm not like that, but I want to be like that. Because yeah. You mentioned that's from the Old Testament, how much more in the New Covenant, where as I just make myself available, well, Lord, sometimes I have this uh, discussion with the Lord that, you know, I'm here, Lord, so you make the most out of it. (laughs) Maybe I'm not not your first choice, but I'm the one who said yes, right? So you give the ability, I I just give the availability. There you go. Uh, speaking of uh, availability, you made yourself available. Uh, diba? Kasi nag-journey ka na rin eh. Hindi lang naman na media yung initial entry point mo. You were also part of uh, um, praise and worship. But your background is, sabi mo, aviation, di ba? And uh, you were up in the air. Okay? So, how did you discover that this is something that you wanted to do or you're gifted at ano papaano yung process doon and that you wanted to express that in this house well, as you, as you mentioned pastor it came from i'm a musician at the heart so i started with praise and worship and i think when i was a teenager i started with photography and mm-hmm. that led me to social media and eventually Kuya Joel witnessed how I stepped out. Just uh, I think that it's, it's just the desire is just brewing that I think I can do this and I want it for our house at that time. And then it was really God who orchestrated it and aligned things for me, Pastor. Um coming from that church online happened. Um you told me for me to direct church online and then that slowly transitioned me to leading media. And coming from the aviation pastor, um I guess <laughs> it's it's a funny it is a long journey, Pastor, because um, I felt unqualified. Cause, uh, yeah. As you mentioned, it, it wasn't really my background. I had no creative. You know, it just everything I just learned. It just um, happened to be along the way. Just kind of figured things out, mm-hmm. and then we just we're, all, all I did was really just capture your heart, <laughs> Pastor. Um, when it comes to your vision, I think this is what we need, and then and that went like that, Pastor, and. <laughs> and then, yeah, with regards to shifting, Pastor, yeah. um, it was a major decision that I made. Oh, that's right. It was yep. it was a scary decision at that time, but I knew that I had to do it. Uh, I wasn't yet uh, the ministry head of media yeah, yeah. at that time, but then um, I think it was really the Holy Spirit giving mm, you the yeah. desire and the will and the power to do things and decision was just easy i just woke up and then said i think i think i need to just wow. make this decision that's and intense the time i said yes was the best decision i've ever made and so yeah. you don't regret it of uh, course not. Okay, so yeah, that. <laughs> and yeah that has been the journey pastor towards um, what i'm doing right now in church so. I, I think pastor it, part of our culture is this that when there's a need we feel the need and I think we, we captured that by heart. <laughs> when you understand that this is your house, if this is my house, I'm going to take care of what it needs. That's why uh, whenever I talk to young people, that's all young people. Whenever I talk to them and they would ask, you know, Pastor, how can I know if this is the ministry that 
God is leading me. I would always tell them that the, a simple a simple example. When I'm in the house and when the faucet is open, I will not wait for my wife to turn it off. Pagagalitan ako no, di ba? Pero if that's my house, I'll take that's care true. of my house. So if there's a need, we we fill the need. That I think that's what happened to most of us here. That's right. And I think you're already dabbling in the in the idea of ownership, di ba? Ownership. Um, uh, let's let's tie the two two things together, di ba? Kasi like for example, you know, David, with with the different journeys that you have started in oh, praise and worship, and then and then media, and then IT, and all of these things, uh, just making yourself available. Um, uh, how do you shift, and what sort of mindset do you get? Na parang uh, do you train yourself? Do you wait to get trained? Or papano yung journey from one to the next? Um, how, how did you parang because God would lead you to a certain point, di ba? And, and may nakita ka lang na need. Like all of us here, we, we, no one here planned to be in a position that we're in. All of us just said yes and then somebody higher than us said, okay, you do this. Okay, it was done to me. I'm doing it to most of you right now, right? I learned from the best. But, but how was that journey? And then maybe connecting it with, you know, the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, you are filled with the Spirit of God. You are chosen for this one here. But you know, parang, but I wasn't, if I look at it from my point of view, parang hindi naman ako yung first choice. But God would say, no, it's you. So how do you... Well, I mean, I was about to say, I mean, wouldn't it be nice if you had God gushing over you to somebody else, right? Because you're doing your own thing. Mm -hmm. You're not expecting all of this, you know, the attention that you're getting. But all of us, because it's God who sees what you're doing anyway, He's the one who confirms it to somebody else. Because somebody right, else right. needs what you have. That's why we're all here, right? We, we support each other. We complement each other. Where I'm weak, you're strong. And then whatever I can do to assist you or whatever you can do to assist me, that's why God knits our heart. One of the things, one of the reasons I believe God is knitting, knits our hearts together. But if you're talking about the journey, um, what I believe is now God has put something inside of each and every one of us, right? And bringing that out, um, it's, it's, it's challenging to... to Bring it out if you're always, no, Lord, I, I don't want. But if you kind of just say yes to the call, mm -hmm. even that, that small yes, that small step, That's good. God can work with. Uh, I, I do believe that uh, we, we I, I do believe in seasons, right? Like, I didn't, I, I, I had no inclination of moving to media, right? I was okay being, uh, actually, I wasn't okay being in praise and worship because I don't like crowds, so being on stage was a very challenging thing for me. That's why we chose you to be a part of this yeah, one here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this crowd I can deal with, I can work with, but large crowds, it really, you know, they, it, I, I, maybe it's a, it's a personal thing of mine that I don't believe I'm supposed to be on the stage. Um, but what I, what I knew was happening was that um, God, I could, I could sense that God was, seem, it seemed like God was pulling me away I don't want to say pushing me away because he was pulling me towards where he wanted me to go. So you need to understand that you're not, it's, it is not that God is rejecting you in your, where your season is, but that he's pulling you somewhere else where he, believe, where he knows that you're going to flourish, where he knows that you're going to be more, um, what's the term, uh, more able to do what he wants you to do. What he knows, you, you know, everything that he's put inside you, he'll, if you allow him to direct you, then it becomes like, Lord, I didn't even know I was able to do that. Um, now, God knew that I needed OJT points. And so he, I was veering, I already moved towards uh, media because I couldn't do the OJT in praise and worship. There, there, it just, it didn't work. Like aligned lang. It aligned, you know. Yeah. So it was, I believe that was God's perfect timing for that to happen. But because I was already taking multimedia arts, there had to have been a reason why God or why I, I decided that after four years of being in, in, in you know, dabbing in com computers, why God, the technical side of computers, why God wanted me to be in multimedia arts. Um, and it just so happened that uh, I, I be 
because I answered the call, I was able to be uh, to help you know with media for seven years, and I wasn't even expecting that wow. because I, I I don't I don't see that far ahead. God can, but he he knows how far you can go. Um, and the question that he asked me was, how far do you want me to take you? Wow, that's something. You know, okay, yeah. it's it's like it's not how it's not how far, uh, how how because on your own, you probably will only be here. But if you ask, but if 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 you answer God's question, how far do you want me to take you? It it's virtually endless because He's an unlimited God anyway. Yeah. Right. So you recognize the season that you're in, but also be open and flexible enough to know, uh, hold. You know, I was talking about holding things loosely. Right. Right, because it's God who gives it anyway. We're not we're not meant to hold on to it tightly and they say, No, Lord, it's mine. <laughs> no, it's My God's precious. anyway. You give it back to God, right? Um, so I I could I could begin to see the that season of praise and worship was, was ending. And people would ask me, Do you miss it? And the truth is, yeah, I do miss it, but it's I'm not looking for it. Mm-hmm. You know, I I I I I'm happy that God used me in that season. If he if he ends up using me again in that season in the future, I don't know. Oh, there you go. Next week, <laughs> just you can lead worship next week. <laughs> uh, but you have, to, you have to leave yourself open to God's flows. You know, you can't just you can't. If God decides that your chapter is over, it doesn't mean that there is there isn't the next chapter. But you're not you're not going to know that unless you and say, okay, Lord, um, I believe I see that this chapter has ended. What's next? And right. if you allow God to just open that up to you, so many possibilities. Buti na lang nahulugan ka ng computer. Ganun pala yun. I saw stars on that there you go. And, and, and Joe was there. And Joe... Yes, was. I was witness to it. Wait, but you didn't cause it. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Okay, okay. okay. But, uh, it was my fault. Okay. Yeah. No, my, my question, I, I'll ask you. Uh, you can answer this one here, but... but uh, Joe has been has dabbled in many different things, no. Uh, and you can say you're one of the people I know that can be called jack of all trades, diba? Right? And you have Joe of all trades. Yes, there you go. Uh, not Joey of all trades. And, and and that's a parang kaya mo parin yun. And then I see you kaya kaya mo. Except siguro yung dancing. That's when you step back and say, okay, that is obviously not my gifting. But uh, you you. Uh, allowed yourself to be put in multiple places and function there. Um, uh, so, pa uh, kamusa yung process na yon or or knowing that God appoints. Yeah, it's it's really true what Pastor Evo said that um, God qualifies the called. Because I I remember in one of our conversations, um, Pastor is that because I've been in the church so long, so I I know my call is to serve in the house of God. But then when people ask me my assignment, what's your assignment in church? And I remember one of what I told you, Pastor, is that my assignment is whatever you need for me to do to help you. And so um, so I come into uh, it with this heart that knowing that whatever or wherever it is I'm needed, I'll willingly go there. Even if I don't know how to do it, I'm willing wow. to learn it. Yeah. Um and it's really, I think it's it's worked out because um, you know, because God actually puts uh, a desire in you. Um, when you see certain things, like for example, you see a need in a certain area, okay, um, and then God puts a desire in you to, okay, that area okay needs work or it needs help. And if you have that desire, so you start looking at it, you start learning about it, you start studying it, and all of a sudden you find that you're, maybe you don't think that you were the person who was qualified to be to do that particular thing, but because it started with the, with the desire to help fix that area, all of a sudden you realize as you study it that God has actually qualified you yeah. to do it, and not just do it um, haphazardly, but to do it excellently. What I'm amazed is that sometimes God, you just see, and, and I can't say necessarily like God put that in my heart, no? But it's just that you saw, you saw a need in the church and not even be, that your pastor or your leader said you do that. It's just that, well, I don't see anyone else doing it. And you just step in, not knowing exactly what to do. And you, you just begin to do it. And then suddenly, as you're pursuing that, Suddenly, you have a new skill. 
na parang, wow, parang, wow, I, I can somewhat relate now. I understand that. Uh, what I'm curious to know, because uh, Seth, you mentioned something a while ago, uh, you had no desire or inkling or, or interest nor talent towards media and all of these things because you had a, you had a plan. You had something on your mind to be a med tech. Diba? So, but nagkaroon ng shift. Uh, outside of, it feels like God closed that door and then opened this one here and pumasaka using stick figures. I mean, paano mo, paano nangyari yun? I mean, how did, and then suddenly you saw, you saw a need, you, so, paano nagbumuo yung desire sa'yo? Um, it started po kasi na, uh, nagkaroon na ako ng desire nung Jesus Fest po ata sa SMX. Okay. Tapos, pinag-aaralan namin yung cameras. Nandun kami sa part na yun. Parang, ah, camera. So, nung nakita ko, parang, uy, parang gusto ko yun, ganun. Tapos, I didn't know that media needed a camera director that time. Mm. Um, sila ate Mariel pa po yung head ng media that time. Tapos, parang one time, parang nakonek ako ni Shobe into volunteering and my sister. Tapos parang sabi ko, sige, ano, uh, I'll try. Parang nag, I can help po ako. Okay, okay. <laughs> Promoting I can help. There you go. <laughs> If you're curious. Stepping stone lang po. <laughs> so nag, I can help po ako. Tapos parang that time, media wasn't established. Parang yung mga tao, they just stepped in. Sila Jess, sila Kat, they didn't know what camera directing is. They don't know the technicalities of it. Then suddenly, nag-step in ako, nagkaroon na ng technicalities, parang, ah, ito to, yeah. ganito pala gawin to, this is, this is the process. So parang, dun po nag-click in na, eh, pag-graduate na po ako noon. Tapos wow. parang dun nag-click in na, ah, kaya ako, kaya ako, pinag-multimedia ni Lord. Kasi, He is going to use me somewhere. So parang dun ko po na-realize na when you say yes or when you respond to the call of God, He already equipped you for that. Hindi ka niya hayaan na, oh, kaya mo na yan. Di ba? Parang ganun po kasi yung feeling. Pero once you're there, once you're doing it, and once you're already imparting what you learned to the people, parang, ah, hindi pala ako pinabayaan ni Lord. I, I was That's equipped right. to do this. I was wow. anointed to do this. And now, dati hindi ko nakikita ang anointed ako to do media kasi po, mahihain po talaga ako. <laughs> <laughs> hindi naman obvious. Hindi naman obvious. Akala ko po kasi, hindi kami nililuwa. Akala ko po kasi pang praise and worship ako. <laughs> so, nung ano po. Tahimik siya. Not at all. So, nung ginagawa ko na po, I, I was just doing what I'm learning in school. Na parang, ah, ito to, ito to, ganito, mag-camera direct, ganito, gumamit ng data, video. And people were asking me na, oh, ate, turuan mo naman ako ganyan. You, people see the anointing that God has placed in you. Kasi, you're, you're just responding to the call, not knowing na you're already equipped. So, it's easier to just say yes and jump into right. the call that God gave. You know, the common denominator for all of us here, uh, 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 as far as I can see, is that nobody really like planned or parang ang career path ko ito. Because that's how the world will train you. Parang, sige, what about five years and all of that? And to a certain degree, I guess that's, that's a good thing, you know, uh, in terms of uh, just planning. But planning cannot, cannot replace trusting, yeah. right? Uh, you can plan, it's all good, but it's God. Ultimately, you surrender it to the Lord and say, no, no I want, I, I want what's, what's best. And that, that's a great training ground. Church is a great training ground to hear from the Lord. And, and tulad ng, you know, we keep saying here, we don't want to limit what's happening here to stay here. We want it, we want it outside, di ba? But since all of us here are, you know, heavily connected in, in the house of God, And that's why, that's why we're talking about that. But to those people that are listening, um, hindi po uh, parang biru-biru lang or whatever na, uh, para sa kanila lang yun. No, it's for all of, for everyone to trust the Lord. What you don't know is that you may feel like, ah, dito yung gusto ko. And then God has planned certain things and equipping you for something you may not even know yet. And then you realize, oh my gosh, it's, it's what I've been prepared to do. You know, and that's a wonderful journey. Well, let me jump into this thing because all of us here are 
you know, we're creators, we are artists to a certain degree, we build things. Um, meron portion ng artist, ng creator or builder, uh, there's a joy after something is done. Diba? When, when something is created, whether it's a video, whether it's a, uh, whether it's, it's a building or a city or whatever, or a program or whatever it is, right? When you've built that, how, how does it make you feel knowing that because after you created it, you actually wala ka ng control eh. It's the people, you know, you're, uh, that moment of anticipation, what will they think, how will they respond, and all these things. What does it make you feel as a content creator, as a builder, as you know, an artist, seeing people enjoying and responding and actually getting blessed with what you have created? But ano ba yung... Uh, is that something that you look for? Talaga yung lang hanap nyo, parang applause or whatever. Because for people, theater, di ba? Parang before, it does something in us when we go, when we stand in the middle and we bow and you go, oh, people really enjoyed my performance. Pero in the church, it's not really about my performance, you realize, di ba? So, ano yung thought process nyo when once you've done it and said, okay, and then uh, uh, responding to how people look at or, or interact with what you've done. Uh, Joe, do you have? Yeah. Well, to me, because I've always looked at the arts as more of um, like a vehicle. Because uh, what's really most important for us, especially in the church, is the message that we put out. And, but the fact that we're uh, all artists is that we are able to take this message, which is so vital, this message of life, and then use that creativity, that art, to present the message in a way that um, is new, is fresh, in a way that people uh, will catch people's interests. Because that's, that's what uh, the art does. It catches people's interest enough so that the me- they can receive the message easier. So for me, that's the part. Yeah, for me, pastor, as someone, as a civil engineer, actually, in what happens usually in construction is that it's the architect who designs the aesthetics, and it's the civil engineer who makes it happen, like uh, designs the structure, ensures that the the building will not collapse on itself, and actually the well. I'm being biased. The hard work goes to the civil engineer, okay. but once it's done, the, all the praise goes to ar- the architect because they can see the people can see the the facade, the, the aesthetics. But I can really relate to that because uh, I I I love what uh, Sandy mentioned a while ago that um, she mentioned something about if she I'm paraphrasing uh, if she doesn't know what to do she just catches the vision of the pastor, or your, your yeah. vision. Wow. And I can directly relate uh, the way I practice the industry and that's why I, I love volunteering and I actually enjoy being behind the scenes because, okay. you know, the vision that God placed upon the lead pastor and that's you, Pastor Alvin, uh, as one of the ministry heads, we, it's our part, it's our job to, to express that in a way that the message comes across but concerning the ministry that we're handling so in a way that's also like uh, what a civil engineer does after because you did answer ask the question after once a building is done you know they won't they won't ask who is the contractor who's the builder unless something wrong happens <laughs> but they will say who is the architect and you know God God put in my heart a revelation because I, I used to not think like that. You know, at the end of the day, as long as Jesus is lifted up, that's getting the job done. That's the ultimate architect, diba? Getting the praise. Yes. So that's, that's wonderful. Okay, since na mentioned in uh, about grabbing vision, diba? Um, the way, at least the way we process things. Um, meron tayong either word or something is something is shown. I share it. Diba? I share it with the team. I share it with you guys. And 
sometimes when when sharing comes, hindi naman exacto buo na yung picture, di ba? It's just a small thing that I'm seeing or or whoever, Pastor Giselle, the the previous lead pastor here, or even Pastor Paul would share something and it's it's broad. Paano ngayon ninyo interpret so that it's bite-sized so that people can maybe not grab the whole thing because it's hard to gra- grasp it but gets enough so that they can step towards it. Diba? Kayo, I mean, I'll ask uh, Sandy that. How do you interpret something tapos make that visual, you know, interpret that in a, in a, media, in a medium where people can, can actually see something that was just shared to you with words? I think it's very important, Pastor, especially when you cast out something. Is first person to ask you first, <laughs> and Pastor, how do you see things? So we, from there, we get bits and pieces of the things that you see, and from there, it, I always talk to the team that whatever, um, um, like the vision, Pastor. For most times, you mention monoblocks. You mention about with with the build, build, build. You started the year with. Um, uh, building the individuals and these things faster so we kind of sort of um just break it down because i really believe that when we get to understand it personally we get to translate it to whatever medium that we do so yeah and right now we wanted things to be we want we because we're looking for a space and example for this is um this is basically um putting more space for for God to work on. So things like that that we put, uh, we wanted things to be basic, we wanted things to be simple. So what are the colors that we're going to choose? So these are, we kind of translated to that pastor. So that's how we kind of work and the dynamic in the team. Uh, so we have to understand your heart first, pastor, before we get to put it out. It really goes down to like nitty gritty, like color, sound, smell. Because we're dealing with senses, diba. Right? Uh, uh, ito, like Pastor Ibo. Pastor Ibo, you're also tasked, or at least you've taken to heart the not just grabbing hold of whatever vision that you, you hear, but also passing it on. Diba? Papano mo ginagawa yun na, you know, um, do you just interpret it or do you just repeat it like a parrot? Or <laughs> papano ba, you know, how, how do you do that? Wh- how do you do you... it properly so that you you grab the ano i think words are important uh, the exact words would uh, would revolutionize a movement diba? Parang, and once uh, once we receive a word you know especially from you pastor uh, it's important to use the same word but it's important also to carry the heart behind the word that's good because it's good. it's going to be hard for you to just be Parang, parang robot. <laughs> Dito yung sinabi ni Pastor, ito yung gagawin natin. But no, I, I need to catch your heart. I need to know your heart about these certain things. And when you impart it to the team, I think uh, that's where grace happens. <laughs> na, all right. Uh, that's where yung, yung flow of anointing comes. And yeah. when it comes to creating, that's 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 how, how we do it, Pastor. Amazing. Uh, Shift gears, because uh, Joey mentioned, you know, he likes operating behind the scenes, and uh, one of the people would be behind the scenes will be tech people. Nobody, you know, uh, with all the stuff that's going on around here, all the technical stuff. Some of the unseen <laughs> would be the tech, but that involves not just here in this space, but also in virtual world, diba? Right? Um, how do you deal with the fact that nobody will ever appreciate what you do because they don't know it? Is that is that something that you struggle with, or how do you deal with that, or is that something that you buti na lang nobody knows, buti na lang walang may I'll share this because like I, um, for those who may not uh, remember, we we had a space called the Word Center. Remember, it was a space right beside Cinema Seven. And that used to be the main office, right? And just right after, uh, sometime a little after moving to media from praise and worship, uh, a greater responsibility was put on me because somebody else had left. So I, I ended up taking on th- that th- those those functions. And what happened was I, I noticed that I would I would spend a lot of hours in the office alone. 
like I'd be there until maybe two or three, four o'clock. Sometimes I, I, you know, we'd, we'd be there overnight, and uh, just um, you know, being straight, it it can get pretty lonely because there's nobody there. Yeah. It's you know, there's nobody there to. Uh, there are no applause, no physical applause at least, right? So and then you start questioning, what do, why, why do I do what I do? What am I doing? You know, what's the whole point? Uh, but what you don't, what we don't realize early on is that we're actually, and, and I believe that we're all in a place right now where we can say that everything we do is for a crowd of one. Wow. We always do it unto God. Our, uh, what we do uh, on a Sunday is not, is, yes, it is unto man, but first and foremost, it is unto God. This is our service to Him, right? So it's this connection first, then it's this one after. If you deal with this first, and realize that God is happy with you no matter what, then, then you, I won't say that you don't look for the applause of man, but you look for it less. You crave for it less because you already have the applause of the one who matters the most. Wow. Yeah, it's good. Right? So, and that creates that foundation, that humility, that, that stability that you have to keep going. Because if you're always looking for somebody to your left and to your right to, to say, good job, bro, good job, and you don't get it, mm. then you're going to get disappointed. Yeah. But if you, if you know that the one who, who carries you is, is, is uh, well, first and foremost, he died for us. What more can we ask for, right? Uh, that he loves you uh, with an unconditional love, that no matter what you do, proud you. he's proud of you, that he loves you, he's cheering you on every step of the way, then that... that that propels you, that gives you that energy to move forward and to not, and to realize that everything you do is unto God, but it also is for the people yeah. that you, yeah. that, that, that you, you think you're not, we think, or we can get, we can get busy with the stuff back there and we, we don't realize that we're actually ministers there as well in the back. You know, uh, when, when we went to Singapore, one of the things, that, one of the nuggets that I got was everything that they do on the on the week was for the pulpit. Yeah. Operationally, was for the pulpit. All, all, all operations, everything had to be for the pulpit because this was the most important part of the Sunday service, where pastors get to feed the people. You know that the the hindrance to release the message. Uh, there 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 are no hindrances to release the message, right? You don't want any technical diffi difficulties. You want to make sure that you that you cross all your T's and dot all your I's. You want to make sure that everything is working well uh, for the for the leader, uh, for the for the minister, or the pastor to release the word. Because if they're focusing on other things, it's like, uh, you. For me, I didn't do my job. I didn't. I I that I. I have to hone up to that and I have to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I know what I did wrong. Thank you for, for correcting me. And then you just adjust from there. But, you know, it's, it's, it's really about you go back and you realize that what I'm doing is for the one. The applause of man will come after. But the applause of the one is the most important thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's actually interesting because um, when it comes to like tech or, or media, People never really notice um, people unless, in tech or media until something goes wrong. That's true, that's true. Yung mali lang yung mga unless you na show a different verse. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but see, that's, that's the fun of being behind the scenes because you know that what's important for us is that what is in front or on stage, what's happening, is that we want to minimize any distractions as much as That's possible. Good. So like behind the scenes, we're doing all sorts of things, <laughs> like, you know, just to patch things together, just to make things work, just so that um, the, the word being preached on this platform, there's no distraction taken away from it. Um, so it's, it's funny, I guess in a way, you can kind of equate it to like God working behind the scenes in our lives. That's true. Because he, he always is. He's always doing things that we, we never even realized He was doing. And all we know is that as we live our life, things are going well. But we never really sometimes stop to think that what God actually did behind the scenes for us. Yeah. Right. Uh, about behind the scene, uh, you're alone. Uh, from, from what you said about your alone time with God, I believe your alone time will go, with God will, uh, will be the one to empower you when you go out there and minister to people. 
just like me, I, I would I would write songs. <laughs> I'm a songwriter, and uh, there are songs that came out from this church. And uh, there are songs that you will never hear, for sure. So that's uh, that's my song to the Lord. And uh, those things, maybe you do it in secret, you do it upon, uh, for the Lord. Uh, I, I think once it comes out, <laughs> it's not yours anymore. Oh, that's true. Those things that we do, like when they see that picture outside, when they, when they hear that song outside, it's, it's not mine anymore. It's, it's the church. It's for the people. And I think that's the heart of, you know, as a minister, as an artist, uh, you know, you just spend time with God and allow God to use what, the, you know. Let, let's, uh, let's land this plane. No, my question ako. Um, because we are, we are about to embark on a project natin, di ba? And uh, we, want, we want this space to be, to be a place where people sense the presence of God. But it's not, just, it's not just the people or the ministers or the prayer warriors and all of the other stuff that goes on. But especially in our day and age, there's a technical aspect to creating that space and that atmosphere, diba? Right? And... Uh, and we all, kayo lahat, we all have a part in, in making sure that happens. Okay? Um, what, do you, what do you guys see? What do you, what do you see in this space that we're going to build? Uh, and what will give you joy uh, once, once you, you, know, you see it come to pass? Diba? Ano ba yung nakikita ninyo? Because there's a difference between a person, let's say if I'm, if I'm a carpenter and I'm asked what I'm doing, I can say, well, I'm laying bricks or I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. So I'm talking about what I'm doing. But somebody who has vision, when you ask them, what are you doing? Well, I'm making a room where kids are going to play. Well, that's different. It's, it's, it's not just about what I'm doing at the moment with my hands, but what I'm seeing will happen with what I have done. So, iba yung aspecto na yon. So, uh, what do you see in the, in the space that we're... And knowing also, there has been a shift between pre-pandemic and post-pandemic church, right? How is this gonna look like? So, sinong gustong... Ito ko, kay, kay Joey, go. Yeah, um, I, I think um, knowing if, if you've been around this church for some time, uh, probably you know the story behind uh, Build This House and the, all the movements that we've had. And I think it's something that we can, instead of being, you know, because I was one of the project managers there and uh, coming from my, I'm trained. We put a very high premium in schedules and cost. So if something that happens that causes a delay or changes, it puts, uh, we take it personally. But we learn to, as a believer also, we learn to trust God. Yep. Many are the plans of a man's heart, but the Lord determines the steps. And ultimately, I see this place, the, what we're going to build as something that is a refuge, a sanctuary for those who are broken. And we embrace that brokenness, that yep. we, we don't have any pretensions. We're not perfect people. That's why we really espouse the grace of God. Right. That's why it's real. And people, when people come here, they can sense that they can relate because they see, you know, we're, we're, we have our own struggles in life, but we get by. No more than just getting by, we overcome because of the grace operating in our lives. And that's what attracts people right. because of the of presence of Jesus in our lives. Wow. Good, good. Sino pa? Anybody? Yeah, no, go, sir. go, um, Sandy. With us, we have how I see um, our future place is um, for me. Well, from my experience, Pastor, church has always been an equipping place. Um, mm. I've I grew up with the workshops that you've done oh, before, wow, yes, and it has set a level of standard with excellence. So I get to do that whenever, wherever I go. And as you mentioned last 
last time that may our place be a launching, launching um, a place or where a home where people will be launched from, wow. and That's good. and the joy I guess, Pastor, with, with what we're going to do, with what we're about to do as creatives is um, to create a space where people get to find their place in our house. So, so good. yeah, that's it, Pastor. Wow, thank you. Joey, uh, Joel? Yes. Uh, for me, um, I see a place that has versatility. Because mm. um, as, a, as a church, I know that we are very versatile, that whatever um, the people need, God yeah. helps us become that thing. We, we've fed people. We've built houses for people. We've helped people, um, you know, uh, bring families together and help heal people. So in the same way, I, I see our, our space as being one that we can make it um, into many different things. Whatever is needed by the people, whatever is needed by um by, by God that we can transform that space Good. into what's needed. Wonderful. Um, on this side? Yeah. Maybe last year, I was with Sandy and Ricky. We were in the Life Center during the recording. And uh, we were like reminiscing every, all the things that you know, we experienced in the Life Center. And I said, there's a lot of memories you know, happen. Yeah. A lot of encounters a lot of alone time with God. Songs has, has been written, um, encounters, uh, life groups, and all of those things. Uh, and I said, with this new space that we will have, there will be encounters. I, I think we will create moments. Yeah. There will be moments. There will, we will make history. Yeah. That's the good. past, the past was glorious, but I think right. it's even more glorious. Yes, yeah, so with the space that we're believing for. Lives, eh? it's it's lives being transformed, and once you see a life transformed, although you know you may have a small part in that, and that's already a joy, you still step back and go, "Wow, galing mo Lord! Wow, Lord, I, I was part of that." Well, Lord, the, the, the lights actually help the, when, you know, or, or, or the music or, or the graphics that we did touch somebody. The verse that was put out there was like, all of these things contribute to that transformed life. And wala nang makakabawi nun eh. David? Well, what I see is, um, you know, the, you know the, the big television transmitters in Quezon City? ABS, CBN, GMA, right? Um, what I see is, the, uh, how do I say it? It is a, it's going to be a broadcast center to reach more people. Wow. Because that's just one space. Eh? You know, uh, your heart is different spaces, potentially different spaces around. And how do we, how do we get to those people as that's well? Right. You know, so while we're thinking about this, um, it's also good to think about the next step after that wow. because you have to build the infrastructure first to support that so. if you don't have that you can do it later on it just it'll take longer to do but if you have it in place at the very beginning already and pastor says all right I need that I need that available there I need that available here and all of these different places you already have the infra infrastructure infrastructure in place where you probably only need to augment a few things and you can get it done. You know, wow. if, if pastor wants multiple locations, we need to have something that can actually broadcast the multiple locations. Um, so that's what I see. It's, uh, we're building the home, but eventually, as you, know, you guys were saying, we're building people. But, uh, and at the same time, we're, building, we're working with technology that can actually reach the people that need to be reached out there. Wow. Well, yeah. speaking of multiple locations, one of the ways to do that is actually through social media. So, Sess, what do you what do you see? Um, I see it as a place of rest. Um, pandemic came, and it everybody was stuck at home. Everybody was on their screens. Uh, 
the, the noise in the social media was so loud that it tells people who they are. Mm. But this place, for me, is a place of rest. I see it as a place of rest. Because sometimes, dahil nga na-stuck tayo sa bahay because of pandemic, pag nasa bahay ka, you don't feel rested. You feel restless. And you don't see your house as a home anymore. And I want na, I see it, when people come in and, and they just feel family, they feel home, they feel what we feel that pastors has set up, the family that we have, that there's a warm embrace waiting for them, that they can let go of everything, their responsibilities, how people see them, and just I'm with God in this house and I'm with my family. I'm wow. I'm spending time with the people who love me and we're just here to worship. I don't have to think of my work ako, my, my performance, akong kailangan gawin, may kailangan ako ibigay sa boss ko. But when they step in into this new home that we're going to build for them, it's not just four walls where we just worship God. But it's more than that because we already reach people through our social media na beyond we have people coming from states from other parts of the world na hey when they see this house they would see na hey i want to go there i want to experience the family because it's different Amen. online but when you come here and step here you really i mean the presence is still there pero the presence being with your family worshiping and right. lifting his name it's different so i see it as a place of rest completely rested in God. Wow. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for sharing what you see, sharing your lives, sharing your journey. But this one here, what we're building here is more than just, of course, a physical structure. The physical structure is important. We want to be excellent. We want to be, we want it the best, not so that we can get the applause, but so that we can say, look what the Lord has done. That's what we want. And then to gather together as a community. But it's not just the people around here that will build it. You guys watching and hearing this, you're part of this house. You're part of this family. And we want to welcome you home. So till next time, again, this is Build, Build, Build. Because we are getting ready to arise and build. Bye.